Now that's what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to look at the results side by side, figure out if it's easier, if the results are better. Okay, so in this test, we're going to have two walls. They're both going to have a plaster applied the same way. They're both going to get one flattened. Now this is going to be a test to see which method is the best way, not only for a better finish, but more importantly, to see better of longevity and plastering, see if it is a better process for the body overall. Now that's the reason we're doing this test and that's what we're going to be going into. Now we applied the plaster like I said, now flattened both walls with a spatula. Now I'm using the Rafina X Skim, which is something I'm trying out recently at the moment. Um, but basically the idea is that everything is the same except for the sponge inside. Everything after that is also going to be the same, we're just going to test walls with the difference of the speed skim. Right, so this is the point I'm going to sponge float the wall. Now just to reiterate, that's had first layer applied, speed skimmed it and we'll give it one flatten. Now this is just had one speed skim, just one flatten. Now all I want to use, this is a sprayer, this is a sponge float. The wall like mist, you don't need too much because of what stage we're at. We only need to give it a little bit of water, a little mist here. Now what we're going to do is come up and we're just going to float it. Now what we're doing is we're putting a nice texture on the wall, but this isn't just for a giggle. Basically what we're doing is flattening the area of plaster we've applied. Now, the reason this is something we're looking into is because some people find it easier to get the wall flatter. So, I'm just going to work on that section there. I used to use a flexi trowel. I prefer now just to use my standard carbon trowel. And that is because I find flexi trowels in any instance can get the wall. It gives it wave even after sponge floating. Now this, Sponge floating is designed for two reasons. One, to get your walls flatter, but two, to relieve the pressure of standard everyday plastering. Now, the reason I keep coming back to this is because plastering is a bloody hard trade. It's hard on the body and it's hard on your joints. Now, this is one reason why we're looking into, is this worth doing compared to traditional plastering? The beauty about using a sponge float is it just makes plastering, the flattening, extremely easy because we've brought the plaster back to a place where it's workable and it's easier to smooth. Now, this does make plastering easier. And like I said, any way that we can find a way to extend our work life is good. But the issue is, is it better than actual traditional plastering? Or is this a fad that needs to be put down for rest? So yeah, I've had a bad knee now for about two, three months. Compared to that one. Yeah, so I tore my ACL ligament quite a few years ago. But um, yeah, building trade definitely doesn't make it better. Never a day off, never a day's rest. Uh, plastering's bad. Um, well, it's not great on your, great for your knees, but it's worse for your, uh, worse for your elbows and shoulders, I think. Mm. So that's what you struggle with a bit more, isn't it? Okay, so this is a point where the problem is. Now, this is traditional plastering. We're just flattening with a trowel and using a bit of water, running up the bead. Now, at this point, even this stage of plastering, the plaster is starting to take up, which means it's fighting against you. The amount of pressure you have to put on the wall now. So I'm pushing my trowel against the wall and it's stiffening up. Now, this is when your joints have to work in overtime. And this is where, through wear and tear, your body will start to feel the effects. And this is probably the point where my elbow starts to kick in a little bit. Right, so this is the wall that was sponge floated. Now the difference is, it's still a bit moist from before. We're trialing up and we've still got a bit of workability. Don't get me wrong, there's still tension. I'm not gonna stand here and lie to you and say that it's perfect, but there's not as much and there's a bit of play in the plaster. The any ripples that were left behind is trialing out easily. We don't really have to use too much water easy. The plaster isn't fighting as much as a traditional sense. This is where the differences start to show. One, in the finish, but two, in how much effort you're putting in getting your walls flat. Because the sponge took off any ripples or high spots, which is what a float does. Because you've done that, you don't have to put any pressure trying to trowel them humps out. So that's where the problem is. When you're troweling, if there's bumps in a wall, you're trying to push thick layers of plaster through with a flat trowel, and that's where you're gonna get resistance against your joints. That's where the pain's gonna come from. Now, like I said, everything is the same. Well, we're coming to the later stages of plastering. What we're doing is the wet trowel. 
So I'm just using a water brush to soak up the wall and then basically this is the polishing stage of plastering. This is where we start to get the finish looking really good, really flat. Now here's a wall that wasn't sponge floated and now here's a wall that was sponge floated. We're going to check the comparison side by side, we're going to look at the finish and then we're going to discuss is it actually a better process and instead of me going on about it I'm going to ask main man Charlie who we spoke to before and see what he thinks. What do you think about sponge floating? Um, as we can see on both these two walls now, so this one's sponge floated and this one isn't. And I personally think that with a sponge float, it's a lot easier on your body. And I think it actually, when it's dry and when it's painted, you get a better finish. I think it's flatter and different lighting. You don't get, sometimes you get like a few little ripples, no matter how good you are as a plasterer. Mm. We've been plastering for 10, 15 years and I just think that, I think it is a better finish, but it is also sometimes a bit of a faff. This one for one day and already it's falling to bits. But I know we can glue that, but it's not really the point, is it? When you're trying to use something, you want it to work. And you just got to really clean them up loads and then they just tend to dry out. That's messy, um, it's messy, yeah, well, we've got sheets down here. Um, but yeah, I just think it's, um, it's a messier process, but a lot easier on your body. And I think when you look at the wall, it just dries one color. Basically, that is a verdict on the sponge floor plastering. The only thing I will say is the faff that will make me be put off from it. So if it wasn't for the faff, if it wasn't for the messing around, I'd probably do it more often, but we'll see. In the future, I might be using sponge floating more often. But for now, that is my verdict on the sponge float plastering. Now, if you want to see a better process for your body in plastering, if you want to see a video where we talk about the fundamental flaws of the trade, if you want to see the best way that I'm using technology in plastering to not only get better results, but make it extremely easy on this body, then click this video here, and I'll show you a magic tool called a board lifter, which will make your life 100 times easier.